Hello and welcome to this research presentation on findings from research into the sustainability of the Beckwith International Leadership Development or BUILD program in Tanzania. My name is Dr Ian Lindsay and this presentation is done with my colleague Dr Hamad Day from the University of Dar es Salaam. The research we present is part of a broader research project funded by the Leverhulme Trust into Sustainable Development in African Sport. Supporting the preparation of this presentation has been a number of young leaders in Tanzania who have engaged as research assistants in this project. They have collected all of this data um, for this presentation and have done a, a wonderful job. So I'd like to acknowledge the input that Jalal, Francis, Mohammed, Aziz, Jonas, Charles and Ernest have put into this presentation. You will hear from some of them during the presentation as they are the best people to describe the research and put the research into context. Unfortunately, some of the sound, uh, some background noises in some of the sound recordings, so please accept our apologies for that. As background, the BUILD programme in Tanzania delivered leadership training through sport uh, in a number, a large number of schools and colleges in Tanz across Tanzania from the, when the programme started in 2009 until 2012. As the programme came to a close, uh, we started to undertake this kind of research and engaged the, the seven young leaders who we'd identified on the previous slide who had been involved in delivering the BUILD programme. We engaged them as research assistants to investigate the impact of the programme and its sustainability after that. Throughout the year from June 2012 to June 2013, uh, the research assistants undertook visits to 23 secondary schools and 10 teacher training colleges where the BUILD programme had been delivered um, and these schools and colleges were spread across the four BUILD centres uh, across Tanzania in Dar es Salaam, Songea, Malia and Arusha. And each visit the research assistants undertook interviews with the head teachers of schools, teachers who had been trained through the BUILD programme and also young pupils and students who had also been trained through the BUILD programme at one point. The findings that we're going to present today come from the reports that the research assistants wrote on each of their visits to a school or college and also very much from a group discussion that we held in Dar es Salaam at the university in June 2013 where all the seven research associates came together with myself and Hamad and discussed the findings that they had found, they had identified over their research over the previous year. And that is what is going to be reported on in the following slides. In terms of the first part of our findings, we will speak about the development of the school pupils and students through their involvement in the BUILD programme and training and also the sustainability of those impacts. And in particular on this slide we speak about the sport related impact of the BUILD training and programme. And Charles, first of all, one of our research assistants, speaks of the types of young pupils and students who were chosen to participate to undergo the BUILD training and some of the issues around that. So most of the of the Young people was registered to, to attend the training. Right. Was those who are interested in the sport. Right. And the teachers had identified them. Yes. Yes. Um, right. And then what happened after the first day we, we, we went for right. the for the training? Um, some of them after finding that it is not all hundred percent about the sport, yes. but it is rather than mm. leadership yes. skills through sports, some of them drop out. Yes. And very interesting. Others was interesting to come and join us. Yes. Those who are not even participating right. in this sport. Okay. So, two things used to happen. Right. So, as Charles has explained, there was some surprise that the BUILD program was more about leadership skills and not about 
mainstream sports and in fact in a lot of cases to a large degree focused on local uh, traditional and informal games and there is evidence from the work that the research associate assistants have done that this enabled girls to engage more with the training or they certainly responded initially better to this uh, type of training than boys did and also for, in some of the teacher training colleges there was a larger proportion of girls who undertook the training. Before we go on to consider the sustainability of any sporting outcomes, we'll just listen to Jalala who speaks and provides an example of the effect that the build training has had on participation in sport in some schools. But after getting this Twins, some of schools and colleges, they participate seriously right. in sporting games. Right, yeah. uh, for example, la one college in Mwanza, Mal FDC. Of course, before getting these trains, mm. they they have a low low participation in sport, right, yeah. and. Young people, they did it participate in any sports, right. but uh, after this trends, build trends, mm -hmm. now they have grounds, right. football grounds, netball, yeah. and they participate well in sp right. sport. Yeah. So Jalala has talked about the increases in participation in sport that were witnessed in some schools, and also their connection to the opportunities that are available for young people to do so. And we'll speak more on, on subsequent slides about the effect of BUILD on sustainable opportunities for involvement in sport. But very much the sustainability of the sporting skills that young pupils and students gained through their BUILD training was very much affected by the extent to which sporting opportunities were available to them subsequently. And in some schools and colleges these opportunities were extremely kind of limited and again this will be an issue to which we return on a future slide. In comparison to the somewhat limited sporting outcomes for the young pupils and students who underwent the BUILD training and were involved in the BUILD programme, there was far greater evidence and more widespread evidence of the personal and social development gains gained by these young pupils and students who had undergone the BUILD training from the discussions with the research associates and the evidence that they gained and put into their reports, both from the young pupils and students themselves and their teachers, there was strong evidence of uh, developments such as improved confidence, particularly in speaking in public, improved discipline within the schools, organisational skills, cooperation amongst the young people themselves, and also with their teachers that have been developed through the BUILD training and in particular because it's focus on leadership. It was also reported that these skills were more likely to be sustainable for the young uh, people who had been involved because those skills were ones that they would use and would be valuable to them in, as we say, everyday life. There is some also kind of evidence of examples of this. So for example, in some schools that build trainees have been elected subsequently into leadership roles within the school. For those build trainees who had been, who were also trainee teachers, having undergone the training was reported to have put them in a better position uh, to get a, a job teaching in the school when hopefully they would utilise some of the build skills as well subsequently. So if we move on to the sustainability of build activities in the schools and colleges in which the programme was delivered, there was expectation hopefully that some of the training that had been delivered would continue in terms of activities for pupils and young people in the schools and colleges to participate and lead sport. 
What our evidence strongly indicates is that any continued deliver, delivery of sporting opportunities in these schools and colleges was dependent on two things. One, the enthusiasm of the pupils and students who had been trained uh, as leaders in sport and in the majority of cases that enthusiasm was reported to be strong. On the other side of the coin, the young leaders and even some teachers required support from teachers and especially the, the school administration, for example the head teachers, to be able to continue delivering activities associated with BUILD. And it's interesting when we look at some of the examples where activities were sustained after the BUILD training was delivered. So for example, there was a number of schools where uh, bonanzas, sporting festivals, were run uh, for a number of times after the BUILD training had been delivered. And Francis, from Arusha in the north of Tanzania speaks in the following clip about some of the competitive sport opportunities that have been instigated after the build program was delivered. Yeah. Some of the schools have managed to establish their own school teams and yeah. college, yes. college school teams. And the uh, most important which was uh, maybe so impressive for Ultra Center, yeah. uh, the, the establishment of competition of schools and colleges which have been involved in the BD project. Right. And yeah. those schools and colleges have been participating in that tournament. Right. It was okay. held in uh, April in this year. Right. So it's, uh, I think before BID project there was not a, such kind of, uh, right. of competition. So the BUILD program effectively prompted some of these colleges to come together and run uh, inter-college competitive sport competitions. And similarly, in the second example, in Dar es Salaam, there were a couple of schools who started new girls football teams and provided more opportunities for girls to participate in sport after this, the build training had gone and been delivered in those schools. Charles presents a third example where the build activities were adapted by one school, integrated into their curriculum and also further support was garnered by the school to enable these activities to be sustained. Um, for example, there is one school <coughs> in Songhea London, they call it London, London Secondary School. Um, actually, they, they, they have adapted the mm -hmm. all build material, all, all right. build uh, ideas, right. and, and, and they localize it, mm -hmm. and they take it as the part of their school. Right. Yeah. Um, nowadays, actually, what, what they've done, they, they have created some of the simple equipment to, with the, the local available materials. Um, actually, they, they, they have done also a fundraising to, 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 to buy the, the, the modern, modern equipment which they, they, they cannot afford to make from the local materials. And also, the, they have established a, a school timetable for all of the students to participate in, 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 in sports. So, so to me that is the, 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 the basic impact. The examples that we've just heard about are good examples in terms of sustaining aspects of uh, sports activities. But unfortunately they weren't replicated in the majority of schools um, that were involved in the, and colleges that were involved in the research where the indications were that there was very little activity sustained after the build program delivered its training. And there were a variety of reasons for this. First of all was uh, the extent of support from the school's uh, management and administration. For example, head teachers. And this was a consequence of the project tr trying to cover a large uh, amount of schools which were invited by the letter, which gave no indications of whether they would uh, support uh, continued and sustained activities. And the lack of support was indicative of the commonly low priority given to PE and sport activities in schools, as, and this then affected the time available for activities 
the sporting activities as a result of build, as Mohammed will now explain. But uh, the other thing also, which was just a very big challenge, is just uh, student schools have no time for sports, most of the schools, because of time table to be very tight. Yes. So the after school club was just a very, very uh, big solution. But after school club, you cannot run it without providing uh, some uh, allowance, some running allowance for schools. Yeah. So as the teachers can just be able to handle the students mm. and uh, maybe to buy some facilities for the club by themselves, yeah. at least they can just uh, uh, you can just buy their time mm. for keeping them because after school everybody just going for some other stuff. A teacher is just out of the uh, work time already, you can just go for other stuff, but student as well. Yeah. Beyond these reasons, there were others that affected sustainability. By the time our, our research assistants came to go to schools, many of those teachers and students and pupils who had been trained through the BUILD programme had now left. And this was perhaps inevitable in the case of uh, pupils and students. Although there was some hope that trainee teachers who had received BUILD training would then go on and use that training in their teaching jobs that they were go on, going on to. There was also a commonly voiced desire from schools and colleges for further support to sustain activities and further training, both to build the skills that have been developed among some individuals and also to widen the, the pool of students and teachers who have been trained through BUILD. And that might help overcome, overcome the movement of teachers and pupil students as well. Perhaps the most unsurprising but also the most common in constraint on sustainability was the limited facilities and equipment that was available in schools and colleges. And even though the build uh, delivered adapted activities that could be used with minimal equipment, even accessing uh, a resource such as empty water bottles in replacing cones was difficult when these were a valuable source of potential income for some people. So we'll draw some conclusions from this presentation and they have to be regarded as interim conclusions given that the research in Tanzania and the Leverhulme Research Project more generally are continuing over the forthcoming year. However, some key points can be identified and also perhaps in red on the slide some learning for the delivery of similar programs to build in the future. In terms of the impact and the sustaining impact of the program, this was more evident on the personal and social development of young people rather than the sporting skills. They also had an easier context to access in which to uh, continue to, pr to use the personal and social development skills. But this finding uh, speaks of the, the use of traditional games in the BUILD programme, which were already familiar to those trainees. So it allowed leadership skills, personal and social development skills to be a core focus of the training. Whereas if the training had delivered mainstream sports, a proportion of the training would have to prioritise the skills required for those mainstream sports as well. The research also demonstrated the importance of context on all aspects of sustainability. So the context allowing young people to use the skills that they've been de uh, developed through the build training, the context allowing or encouraging uh, the sustained delivery of activities that build had promoted. And so this points to the importance of the scale of the programme in terms of uh, choosing schools that would provide supportive context for sustainability and also the skill allowing the program to provide ongoing support for schools and organizations involved in the program and to in order to influence them to continue to deliver activities 
The examples of sustainable activities that we've identified were not necessarily exactly the same as those that the build itself promoted. And so that indicates, suggests build as a spur or a catalyst for people to begin to, to develop sporting activities. And in terms of learning, this uh, indicates the importance of not seeing sustainability as linear in terms of the activities promoted in the programme continuing in exactly the same way. Rather, it is important to value um, alternative forms of sustainable activity in which those involved in the programme at a local level adapt what they have learned and adapt it towards the needs that they see on a local basis and what the, the activities that will be valued within that context.